Hello and welcome to another episode of the Retail Journey Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Charles Greathouse. And I am James Harris. And today we're talking with Brandon Pogue, the founder and CEO of True Labs. Welcome to the Retail Journey. Thank you for the invite. I have been looking forward to this conversation. We've had a few short ones. Yes. And every time I walk away, wanting more. <laughs> well, I think uh, I was telling Charles earlier, I feel like it's uh, this fraternity that I've joined in Arkansas. And all of a sudden, I feel like one of the brothers. Awesome. It's been very fun. That's yeah. great. Yeah, up here for a little retail visit to the, the local retailer, Walmart. Um, and a, couple, a-, a couple of retail visits. Yeah, yeah, no joke. We've had yeah, a few while we're here, and it's yeah. uh, it's been a great trip. I'm thrilled to be able to also talk to you about your retail journey. That's right. Um, would love to start with, all right, like tell us a little bit about you, Brandon Pogue. Wow. Well, that's a, that's a very loaded question. I, I don't think I can say um, much about that besides I've been married for 21 years, right? So awesome. pretty much lost my identity 21 years ago, and... Uh, my wife, who is actually our CMO for our company, we work along side by side. She's actually a co-owner of the mm. company with me. So um, we have had this amazing um, experience, you know, for so many years when I was I was in construction, then I was in real estate. And then back in 2017, we got into the space that we're in now. And what was so fun, like, I remember coming home and it was like, I would report to my wife, like, what what I did at work that day. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, she gets to do work with me and we have these deep, meaningful conversations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are about true labs. Yeah. And so, uh, that's been pretty amazing. In fact, the reason the journey really happened was because of the passion that her and I found toward holistic health, nutrition, and, uh, dietary supplements. So, um, many years ago, you know, we were both on this journey to find out that there was a lot of power and a lot of uh, benefit to natural health products. And, um, you know, kind of getting away sort of like from a Western minded mm-hmm. medicine background to where like, Issue you know, if you, well, if you had an earache or something, you were going to go get a prescription, right? Antibiotics for an mm-hmm. earache, right? And so we started to find that supplements really could help um, the body and help heal the body. And uh, the thing was, is that, all the natural, you know, hippie supplements that we, we took, they all tasted really bad. And I'm like, well, why would something that's good for you taste mm-hmm. really, really bad? So that's where the idea of True Labs came was let's make natural, holistic products that taste really, really good. So we put as much emphasis on efficacy and the, natural, the naturalness of the products and, and the bioavailability of the products as we do on, on flavor. And I think that's what makes True Life stand out. Yeah. And, and tasting it without reading the label, you would think it was all about flavor. Like it, it is an amazing product. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, I, we're on what I call our Gen 3 products. In fact, what we've been presenting the last couple of days were, were these new innovative products. And uh, when people say, wow, you've got no sugar, you've got no um, stevia, you've got no sucralose, and it tastes this good, how do you do this? And so we've really, you know, been innovating. We're a very mm-hmm. innovative company. And the last, the last six months, almost every Friday, you know, in our office, we've got a lab. And so we've, we, we spend, you know, the second part of our Friday is just innovating, innovating, mm-hmm. innovating. And, and what's great is to see the, um, the amazing rapport with all the people that we had meetings with the last couple of days. Yeah. Right. I mean, they would drink it and they'd be like, how <laughs> they don't, they don't believe it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw that this morning, yep. you know? And so, um, for us to use this, we've got a monk fruit version that has another type of, uh, a red M that's made from sugar. And then some other things that, that we naturally put these amazing flavors together to have this experience. So you've got, you know, high, uh, bioavail- bio- bioavailability, meaningful, like really good for you products that taste really, really good. And I think you, there's not many companies in the retail space that still keep innovation at the forefront of their mind. You know, yeah. like a lot of these companies will come out with one good product. Mm-hmm. And then that one good product is what like blasts them into the retail space. Yeah. And then it becomes all about the almighty dollar. Mm-hmm. We still keep the customer, the end customer, not the, not just the, the retailer. We still keep the end customer in mind. It's like, is this the best thing for them? 
And I think that's what makes True Labs truly different. Well, and you can get flavor fatigue on something that oh, you yeah. consume on a regular basis and just the, the variety that you continue to come out with. Um, so the company started in 2017? Yeah, it started. The, it's, we started innovating in 2017. So we really spent spent probably six months to a year just doing research. And, um, you know, originally we started out with a, with a pre-workout series, which was kind of like the original idea was to invent. Uh, you, you talked about flavor fatigue, but uh, really there was a pre-workout fatigue. Most of the pre-workouts that you used <laughs> to take back in the 90s, you say, hey, you can use this for 30 to 60 days, but after 36 days. Your kidneys days, need a break. <laughs> yeah, discontinue, oh. they said discontinue use for 14 days. Well, why, why would you do that? Like, why would you take a product that you can only use for a certain amount of time or it starts being degenerative to right. your body, right? So we actually came out with a, uh, um, a pre-workout system. So we had an A, B, C, and a D formula. And you could rotate. Mm. And you could use those for a certain time, and then you go to a different formula, which was made of different ingredients. Uh, so you wouldn't just have uh, pre-workout fatigue, right, which is the old one scoop, two scoop, three scoop, you know, and you don't feel it anymore. So we actually had four different versions of pre-workouts, and we had two different flavors of each. So we had, hmm. when we started out, we had eight different SKUs as a brand new company, right? That's a lot. But we sold that as an e-com. Like, we were based on e-com, um, and we really were a Shopify platform, right, and... Uh, and that was fun, but it was really fun to kind of get into more products with the energy, with the sleep, with the protein, with hydrate, right? Uh, we really we just kept innovating and innovating. And I think what's so cool is when you when you you get an underlying foundation of 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 knowledge in this space. It's funny because your next invention can be better, and then it can be better, mm -hmm. and it can be better. Like we've invented, we've presented some products in the last couple of days that I think are the best products that we ever put out. Wow. And I think we'll just get better. Like, I yeah. can't imagine what we'll invent next year. You know, <laughs> yeah. I hear, uh, you know, necessity is the mother of innovation. So when it came time to start this innovation journey, 2017, you want to tell us a little bit about the impetus to create True Labs? Yeah. I mean, um, what was interesting about this was, was I think discovering the holistic side of medicine with the different doctors and practitioners that we were working with at the time. And um, what we do different than anybody, and this is like, I don't tell a whole lot of people this, is like we use uh, muscle testing or kinesiology testing with every ingredient to the hmm. body to make sure it's good for you. So I'll give you an example. We, uh, when we tested magnesium sources, right? You've got different suppliers, you've got different type of magnesiums, they're bound with different things, mm -hmm. right? One of the things that we actually did, we actually went and found all these different, like 60 different magnesiums and we tested them with the body on multiple people because mm. different people respond differently to each thing. So what's really interesting about this is my genetic makeup is so different from my wife's. I kind of probably represent 80% of the population and she probably represents 5% of the population, right? Mm -hmm. And so if it works on me and her, then that's a really good basis. Then we can go test it on 10 people. Then we go test it on a hundred. Then we go test it on a thousand. Right. Yeah. And so, um, what's really neat about, that, that process and that model is once it works on us and then we go test it, then we know it's going to be good as a stack. So of those 60 magnesiums, we found the top two. So what, what are you testing? So they, they consume it and then what's the test look like? So it's actually like, uh, it's actually one of these things where you actually put next to your sternum and, and you know, around you is, is like an energy field. Um, and so a doctor or, or a chiropractor who's tested in this method they can actually see if this is good, if it has a positive response, yeah, or if it has that. a negative response, right? So it's a it's a real it's a real alternative way mm -hmm. to testing things. But what's so great? It's non invasive, so you don't have to like go get your blood drawn and, right. and do all this kind of stuff, right? And because of the way we do it, you can test it on a lot of people really fast. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But we do that with every formula, with every ingredient, with every flavor that we put inside of True Labs. That's really. So you won't find any maltodextrin, you won't find any dextrose, any corn products. Cause that's gonna disagree Labs. with everybody. Cause it's body, disagree right? with everybody, yeah. right? Because your body can't absorb it, it's not good for you. And uh, we actually found that with Stevia. So there's a lot of people say, oh, mm. well, we're an all natural company, but they're using Stevia. And we found that Stevia actually caused liver enzyme activity to increase Right, yeah. which actually means it's causing your liver to break down. What do you mean? There's a plant on the package. Yeah, I know. <laughs> have you ever seen? Uh, have you ever <laughs> seen stevia root? 
So stevia root, when you look at it, it looks like this dark, sugary. I've actually cat. grown it in my garden. Okay, before. great. So have you seen the syrup from that that comes mm -hmm. from that? Like it's like like a dark maple syrup, right? Yeah. Well, when you look at the stevia powder, it literally looks like cocaine. Right. Right. I mean, it's right. it's it's been it's a white ionized like kind of powder, and uh, and people are like, oh well, it, it's natural. It's all natural. Well, great. But just because it's all natural doesn't mean it's good for you. Right. 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 Sugar's pretty natural. Yeah, it is. So <laughs> let's just keep eating sugar and sugar and sugar. You know, the average American. Uh, in 1908, com consumed less than a pound or about a pound of sugar. And then today's uh, average American is over 50 pounds of sugar a year. Wow. Oh, and wow. so people talk about type 1, type 2. So you're a type 1 diabetic. Type one, we were yeah. talking about this earlier. So there's, uh, in, in America, there's 100 million either type 1 or type 2 diabetics inside the United States. And, you know, a population of what, 350, 400 million? Yeah. You know, so one in every four, right? So what we don't want to do as a brand, and growing. yeah, but what we, <laughs> yeah, and it shouldn't be right. But what we don't want to do as a brand is we don't want to contribute or keep contributing to an epidemic, right? Which is type right. type two, really. Yeah, you know, type one's unavoidable, right. right? And we're about ten percent of that total, really. Uh, type ones to type two. Yeah, and so what's great is if we want to be a brand that is the most far-reaching and the most uh, cast the widest net. We've got to include diabetics. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys know from being in CPG, um, there are certain diabetic buyers who buy just for diabetic categories, mm -hmm. right? And so, well, we can just include them on a general vitamins aisle or sports nutrition aisle with us. Well, and, and you'll find that, you know, there's, there's always exceptions. There's, there's, I'm sure, people out there that, that don't read labels that have diabetes, but the ones that are managing their diabetes, we read more labels than probably anybody except maybe gluten intolerant. Um, yeah. because that you, you, there's so much hidden in there or could be that you're going to feel in your body in a way where if you got a healthy pancreas, you just, it just happens. Yeah. You don't realize yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, what's, what's cool about, about us. I mean, you know, we, uh, there's a scripture we put on the bottom of all of our boxes. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. It's third John two, which is dear brothers. I pray that you are doing well physically, just as you are spiritually. Mm. And so when we look at, at doing things in products and, and projects, like we have a, we actually have a chaplain who prays for our products, our employees and uh, our customers full time, hmm. right? Sweet old grandma lady, you know, <laughs> you know, she just knows how to pray and just ask the Lord for stuff. Right. And so like, we want to, we want to be part of this movement where, you know, health and spirituality are intertwined mm. because I don't think you can do one without the other. Mm. Right. Um, and so we really want to kind of like, no, be one this, can definitely limit the other for absolutely, sure. Absolutely. But yeah, we want to yeah. be this movement. Like we want to inspire people to say, look, hmm. we're not just here to take your dollar, but we want more for you than we want from you. Yeah. Right. And that's who True Labs is. Yeah. There's a quote. I'm not going to think of it offhand. It's been a while since I read it, but it's in the imitation of Christ. Um, it's kind of a classic um, Catholic Christian book. Uh, and it comments on you have to prioritize your, your physical wellness because if you're sick, you're not going to be able to go into the disciplines that the book was advising you to yeah, pursue. Yeah, so if you can't get off the couch, how can you go and how, how can you go tell people about Jesus? Right. You can't, right? So, um, and that's one thing a lot of Christians don't want to talk about. Like, we can talk about pornography, we can talk about um, uh, alcoholism, mm -hmm. but we don't want to talk about health and wellness. Right, oh, my friend. You know, let's not touch that one, right? <laughs> So I don't know what, I don't know if this thing's rated, right? The, sorry that this podcast is rated, but I mean, it's just one of those things that um, people don't want to talk about. Well, and, and I think, you know, maybe more Western than just Christian, but Christian too, mental health is a part of health. Absolutely. And if your health, if you're not consuming the right things and doing the right things with your body, it all suffers, right? And yeah, um, in fact, a lot of that, I've been, I've been, I met this guy named Gary Brecca and he's just, he's an absolute brain, but he's been talking a lot about folic acid, hmm. right? So when you look uh, on flour on, on boxes and any kind of flour type product, a lot of reason that people uh, want to be gluten free is because they don't like the way flour interacts with their body. Mm -hmm. Well, if they would just stop eating enriched flour, then actually they may not have to be as gluten free as they right. think. Hmm. And it's pretty interesting. So we've started cooking. I love, I love to cook, right? Love to cook. 
um, pancakes. I love to cook crepes, but lately I've been making biscuits from scratch. Mm. Right. And okay, uh, we talk to my stuff. I love biscuits, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and you know what I've been doing? I'll, I'll get biscuits and I'll get turkey sausage or sausage and I'll get cheese and I'll make eggs. We've got, we raise chickens, right? I've got, mm. I've got a hundred chickens at home. I don't know. Don't ask me why. I just love it. <laughs> But we actually raise chicken, so I'll have farm fresh eggs, I'll have turkey, I'll have biscuit, and I'll have some fresh grated cheese that we just cut off the block, you know. And it's the best breakfast. And since we're using flour that's not enriched, you know, we're using organic. So if you look at organic flour, it's non enriched, non, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's so much better and it tastes so much better, but I don't feel sick and I don't feel like, oh, you know, yeah. that feeling that, oh. Right. Yeah. We have a competitor who's like the monster in our space, that uh, big hydrate product, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna say their name but you could probably guess who, but whenever you drink it, it just sits in your stomach and it feels, Oh, you know, it's got that yuck kind of, you can feel it in the bottom of your belly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so if you'll look at uh, non enriched flowers, it'll actually help. I'll do that. Yeah. I love it. We can have more biscuits. Love the I focus love on like, you know, wellness overall. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not, scratch. we're not just selling a product, right? This is a, this is an, a, this is a journey. Yeah. Yeah. It's a movement. Right? It's a movement. So <clears throat> within uh, True Labs, you all started as an e-com only mm -hmm. business, right? And now for the last one year, 18 months, you're in retail? Yeah, what was really interesting, we were teamed up with a, with a pretty big influencer at the time um, that has a big you know, YouTube station and all that kind of stuff. And uh, right in the middle of COVID, whatever you want to say about that, right? <laughs> I don't want to be political about it. But right in the middle of COVID, I'm like, everybody's thinking that retail is dead. And I remember t people talking about stores closing and about um, e-com, like everybody's getting everything shipped to the door. And I'm saying, man, this is the time. Like you want to do something when, when, when the flow is not going the way, Yeah. you want to be first to market. And right. so I'm like, this is the time we really need to go for retail. Swim upstream. Swim upstream. Hmm. That right? feels like a Walmart kind of a Well, and, and people were talking about retail being dead. I mean, I remember... Uh, 2007, you know, Walmart or, or, or retail in general is just blowing. They're buying everything on every corner, 20 bucks a foot. You know, every mm. CVS and Eckerd, they're all waging war and all this kind of stuff. And um, I remember seeing that market like that. But when 2020 was happening and everybody's saying retail's dead, I'm like, this is the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think so, how many direct to consumer brands had 18 months of glory and don't exist anymore or exist as a shell of themselves. Man, it's such a great point, right? Yeah. Um, and I think we could have fallen into that trap, mm -hmm. not that it was a trap, but we could have focused in that area. Right. And we decided at that time it was like, this would be a great time to get in retail. So we started to talk to a person that kind of helped us introduce to a couple of relationships, which led to a Sam's club roadshow. Right. Those are fun. Oh, they're a lot of work, but they're, man, they you want to talk about fun. fun. <laughs> We're talking about retail today, right? Oh yeah. yeah. So my wife and I, um, I've got a diesel Ford truck, F-250, right? Big old truck. Yeah. And yeah. I buy this I buy this trailer. It's a Texas truck. Yeah, that's right. It's a big, a big old truck. It's a small truck in Texas. So I buy this trailer from <laughs> uh, uh, the Kyle Foundation, Chris Kyle, uh, the American Sniper guy, right? Mm -hmm. We buy it from their foundation. They were selling it. And it's a, like a race trailer. So we set up this race trailer, and it's all wrapped with all their stuff. So we take it off, and we put our stickers on it. And we started a road show and we did the road show ourselves. We didn't hire anybody or anything. Mm. We actually did it ourselves. So we, our executive team, and then we started hiring um, people to come and ambassadors, you know, to kind of work the shows with us. But we were there in, in, you know, five, six different Sam's clubs, five, six different weeks, right in 2021 when they just started allowing sampling to happen again. Mm -hmm. So there was like, no sampling allowed. Mabel at the table wasn't there, right? <laughs> you couldn't go get your free cheese stick or whatever it was. Yeah. And they let us, because what we did, we put uh, cups and we put a lid on top. And that was kind of to be safe, you know, COVID protocols. Yeah. And we were passing out um, hydrate and energy um, right there in the middle of, of Sam's Clubs. And so what was interesting about that is we were doing Sam's Clubs uh, ourselves. We would do a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then we wouldn't do it on Sunday. So we were doing it for three days. And we were setting like records, per story records of what we were selling. Really? So yeah, we the first the first show we did like nine thousand dollars in three days of sales. That's fantastic. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, in fact, Kyle, uh, Kyle Eggers, who was who was Michael Kirby's boss, we were with Michael last night at dinner. It was just cool to reconnect with him. But uh, Kyle Eggers called called up Michael. And he's like, "Hey, I see the research show for True Labs. 
how many stores are they selling in? They thought one we had multiple time. stores. Yeah, that is one. He goes, they're in one store. <laughs> so we we did our we did we went big. And if we have to do that again, and when we do it again, we'll do it different. But we went in and set up a, a, a 10 by 10 metal lattice structure, had signs, had mm. lights. You know, we had a, a um, we were burning uh, oils, like uh, oil diffusers. Mm -hmm. You know, we had oil diffusers, so we had lights and we had music going. So we had all five senses engaged. Oh, nice. So somebody's pushing the little cart down and they look over and they're like, Man, this is not what Sam's looks like on a daily right. basis. Like, what's going on? So they would come in with curiosity. Yeah, and then we'd sample and talk to them, and yeah, you know, help them out. Walk out hydrated or with more energy. Or yeah, yeah. So that. what was cool is that we did like a number of those shows, and one of them we actually did was here in Bentonville. And um, so if you got any owners or founders who are wanting to figure out how to get in retail, yeah, road here, show. Here's, here's what happened: we actually <laughs> road showed to Bentonville. You know, and we bought hotel rooms for our people, and we were here for three days. Um, there's a lot of expense with it, but um, at that at that meeting, uh, a guy named Stephen Owen, who y'all know, mm. um, was there with his wife and his kid, and uh, he kind of came up to the to the booth and you know was really interested. And I mean, we had we had the, the the aisle lock jammed, you know, with just people and just people. It was just cool because I think people in here in Bentonville. When they see something that's new or different retail, yeah. they're they hyper, they're yeah. hyper oh, yeah. interested Absolutely. in it because this is their background. This is mm -hmm. their world, right? So he comes in, and, he, and, then, and then he's, uh, he's walking out. I didn't even get to talk to him, so he's walking out, and I run to the door, and somebody said, hey, you know, you go meet this guy. So I end up talking there in the breezeway of the Bentonville Sam's for like 45 minutes, and I just found out what a cool dude and great guy he is and all this kind of stuff. So um, he kind of – you know, started the, the ball rolling and called another buyer who's in the category that we were in and then mentioned that buyer that they should look at us. And then, you know, over the course of time, we started to do emails back and forth. And about six months goes by. And, um, you know, I was kind of being slow to respond because we were working on some other internal issues that we had inside the Tree Labs at the time. And um, I remember kind of like, just kind of like, yeah, I don't know if that Walmart thing's really going to happen. You know, it's kind of blowing it off. Like, I wasn't even really paying attention to it. It wasn't, it wasn't on the roadmap at that point. It like, was, I mean, it was, it was on the roadmap, but it was like, I didn't understand how retail worked. I had no clue what was going on and I no. really wasn't getting the right guidance. Got it. Yeah. And finally, uh, the buyer who eventually, you know, ends up bringing us in, he's, he kind of like emails me one day. He's like, Hey, uh, Brandon, are you not interested in coming to Walmart? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man. it was kind of like a brick to forehead <laughs> moment. Right. And I'm like, no, I really want to. He's like, well, I need this and this and this and this and this <laughs> to even consider you wow. guys right and uh so i remember that whole journey and it took it probably took about a year a year and a half of courtship before like it actually happened so yeah. what was really cool i remember it was march 28th and i get an i get an email from from this buyer and he's no longer with with walmart now but i get an email from him and he said hey uh we would like to present you guys in uh 1700 uh walmarts and give you signature wings in 1700 and i remember seeing the email and I just put my hands in my face and I called my wife and I just had the biggest sports cry like I've ever had. Like oh, it was fantastic. like, you know, because like you, you work and you work and you work and sometimes you don't see the fruit, but you always have faith that something's going to happen. Something's going to break, oh, yeah. Yeah. that God's going to move in some way in your business. When there's something about seeing a dream start to transpire yeah, that, is a spiritual event. It was. <clears throat> and as a founder, like if you're, if you don't have God in your business, first of all, get God in your business, it'll change everything. But the second thing is, is like when you start to see that fruit and you start to see that stuff happen, man, it was just so, um, it was so affirming. Right. Yeah. Right. Because I can't believe You've that. You've been plowing and now there, I mean, I remember growing. buying the dot com, the true labs.com. I paid like $3,500 for it. Nobody was spelling true T R U, right? It was all T R U E and all this kind of stuff. Nobody was even thinking about that. And it's just like step after step after step. And to, to realize something from, from nothing now to something that's going into national retail. Mm -hmm. Like I remember looking at the list. And so after that, they launched us in like 3,800 stores, right? So we had 1,700 signature wings and we had 3,800 stores or something like that. Yeah. And I remember looking at all the places our product were going. And it was like, we had two locations in Alaska. Yeah. We had three locations in Hawaii. We had stuff in Maine. I mean, yeah. I've never done a road show up to Maine. 
<laughs> but yeah, we had we had products going all over the country. I'm just like, I can't believe this. It's kind of mind boggling. But then I was like, oh, holy crap. What are we going to do? Because yeah. we, we really didn't have anybody hel helping us. Yeah. Like really, you know, who was giving us any analytics. And you're up to that point. You're 100% DTC. We were, we were all DTC, yeah. right? So then it was like, I, I got in um, a guy who's still with me, my COO, who had been with Nature Nate's Honey Company for uh, for many many years had taken him from like you know zero to 80 million in rev right and so um i get him in and he knows a lot a lot about retail and he's like you know what you really need to get um some other people on the team so we started filling positions and we're running on eos like you guys are yeah yeah and so that really helped to kind of neural operating system. well it really it really clarified who should be on the team and who shouldn't because mm -hmm. we had some people on the team at that 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 time that didn't need to be there's a great great uh, quote and it says people are like chapters in a book but not all characters make it to the end of the story mm. and for us that was true mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people on this journey since mm -hmm. we started but not all of them are supposed to be with us till the end yeah you know what I mean yeah, yeah. and so um, I hire on him and then I hire on a big sales VP you guys know him but Jim McGinnis who was here mm -hmm. uh, last couple of days and the guy's been in, you know, CPG for, for 30 years. Yeah. Well, he would always talk in CPG, CPG. 18 months ago, I didn't even know what CPG stood for. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, and, and now, you know, we've got amazing people. We've got an amazing banking relationship. We've got all these things lined up. And the thing that we really were missing, and I'm not just saying this because you got me on your podcast, but was a full service brokerage team, right? Mm. We've got... Brokers working on other retailers. We're in like six different retailers now. We'll be in 16 by the end of next year. Yeah. But for the Walmart account, which was our biggest account, we really need somebody. It's kind of like you're flying blind, right? Like I'm a pilot. I fly it's its own universe. I fly Walmart. airplanes, right? But you're only as good as your instruments. Mm -hmm. And if you can't trust your instruments, you really don't know where you're going. And that was kind of us. So yeah. now that you guys are on board, it really feels like we've got a good set of instruments. So you've got, you know, a six pack. Yeah. that we can look at there and say, this is where we're going. I love yeah. that part of the six pack. Well, it's an honor to, to, you know, serve alongside you and get to help customers experience the <clears throat> true labs difference. It's been fun to get in there, root cause, figure out what's going on. It, when you, you think about the journey, I don't want to um, try to rewrite any kind of history or, or whatnot, but in your experience going from the, just do it yourself to when do you need to bring in help or, or other folks, um, what advice would you have to other entrepreneurs out there? Yeah, good question. Uh, do it sooner than I did. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of nights that you know I'd, I'd look at the you know look at the scene and be like, man, how are we going to do this? Yeah, and uh, and I always believed that there was a way, but um, you know we met we met you guys at NACDS mm -hmm. in San, San Diego. Diego this year. Yep, and um, I was like, man, I kind of like those guys. <laughs> You know, like they're fun to talk to, they're personable. But just because somebody's fun to talk to and personal doesn't mean they're really good at what they do. Yep. Right. But then we started to kind of interview you guys and vet y'all. And uh, for us, it was like, yeah, these guys really know what they're doing. And what was really evident was spending the last couple of days with you guys here in Bentonville. It was like uh, we'd go into the hall and, you know, you'd go off and you'd be talking to somebody else over you know. And then Matt would be talking to somebody else over here that he knew. And it's like, OK, these guys really kind of know what's up. Yeah. And going through those conversations and you guys having sat on the other side of the table and now sitting with us, it's just been, it's been phenomenal. Yeah. And no, that's the power Appreciate of a good team. Yeah. Uh, one, the, one team, one dream. One team, one dream. Is that it? The Let's obvious go. thing to point out there is I wasn't in the room. Mm -hmm. Like that's Charles and his team and they're, you know, they're, they're best in the business. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of NACDS and kind of some of the human story that <clears throat> we spent some time at your booth. And we had similar reaction. I had a similar reaction. Walked away. He's like, I, I would really like to work with with those people and yeah. the brand. Um, but there's there's, you know, there's business, and then there's like human business. Mm -hmm. And human business is the exception. It's not the rule. There's you know a lot of products, a lot of good products, a lot of a lot of neat companies. But you all, you, you seemed, I don't want to say family because family can be dysfunctional, but you seemed like you really cared for one another and that yeah. there was something different going on there. Yeah. 
Um, like care care for somebody like in a step cousin kind yeah, of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like like the story of how Jim came to you and how that that, that was very providential and the way it worked out. And that, that I don't I don't know exactly what question I'm asking, but I kind of want to go into that because that's what I walked away with. Was like, no, there's something special going on there. Yeah, yeah. So I'd uh, say it's a culture question. Yeah, yeah. Right, because yeah. the the culture is evident at True Labs that it's more than just hey we're here to to make money and and sell products in right. the CPG industry. You know yeah. what's what's really cool about the EOS method for us, and I keep tagging them, but it's the fact that I can get in my box that I need to be in, and I can go do what I do, which yep. is establish our culture, yep. set the vision, and then innovate, right, and yep. inspire. Mm -hmm. So if I can do that, and if I have other people that can take care of the other elements in our, like we hired a new person today, and I knew that we were going to maybe hire him, but he calls me and he's like, Hey, so excited to be on the team. Like I just signed my papers and man, I was so excited. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I was like, it's official. He's like, yeah, didn't you, I sent you saw the email. I'm like, no, I don't, I didn't see the email, but it was, it's great because our team is starting to, yeah, it's like, running, it's really running. It, yeah. It's like a well oiled machine. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and for me to be able to stay in my box and do what I'm doing, so one of the big things that we do is, is establish that culture. And, um, you know, I get this from my dad. My dad, if he really, really likes you, he'll kind of jab at you sometimes. You know, he'll kind of <laughs> like, he'll kind of play with you because that's the way he shows affection. And so yeah. I, I do that too with people. You know, we've had a lot of fun cutting up yeah. the last couple of days. And, you know, yeah. we, had, we had our, uh, we went mountain biking yesterday. We sure did. You know, Bentonville is the mountain bike capital of the world, if you hadn't. Comes up on hurt. most podcasts. Yeah. It's trademarked, so. <laughs> yeah. And my sales VP, who's 62 years old, who's a road biker, like can road bike with anybody, jumps on a mountain bike and follows your guidance. We had a great time. We had a great time. We got to explore. Everybody lived. And pulls an OTB, which I didn't know what that means, but he went over the. <laughs> over the bars. Over the bars. That's not how uh, you, you'll want to ride. <laughs> yeah, a mountain bike. But what I love was is that he was willing to do it. He was willing to follow, and he's willing to have fun and take himself out of his out of his comfort zone. Yeah, right. And when people are inspired, and when people um, feel like they're a meaningful part of a team, they're in. Yeah. Right. Even if you're taking them on a black diamond in Bentonville, and he's never done mountain biking before in his life, <laughs> he's yeah. in. And so I think you know establishing that culture, like one of our core values is fun. Hmm. And if we're I not having that. fun, we need, we don't need to do this anymore. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. Fun's underrated sometimes. Absolutely. I think it is. I, it, it's, it's a, it needs to be 40% of my life and my mind, <laughs> like, or, or it's just dull, you yeah. know? It, yeah. And if you're having fun, you're usually with other people that you care about. Yeah. So what's your, what's, what are you creating? What's the future of true labs? Where Man, are you aiming? The future of, of True Labs is bright, right? It's really bright. Um, I love what we're doing with our hydrate category. There's a lot of innovation that's going on there. It's, it's not just a hydrate product. We've got a lot of offshoots of hydrate that are coming out. And yeah. um, um, I, I know what we're doing, which I don't want to announce it yet on, on your podcast, yeah. but, which I, I would. But I, I think what we're doing is so innovative that when people see it, they're going to be like, wow, we should have thought of that. Yeah. Mm. Why didn't we think of that? And uh, when they try it, they're going to be like, man, how do we replicate this? Right. Because it is so, so tasty and it's so good for you. Hmm. Um, it's going to be really neat to see what the future holds. And I think, you know, if you can invent a product that people need and that they want and that they enjoy, mm -hmm. it's not like just selling aspirin or Advil. It's like, man, I, I need to take this you when I've got it, a headache. You don't enjoy it. But if yeah. you take something that you, that you enjoy and that you need and that you know is better for you, mm -hmm. that's, that's the goal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a sweet spot. I love it. Awesome. Um, so what advice would you give to your, you know, first year entrepreneurial journey self now <laughs> knowing what yeah. you know at this point in the retail journey? So I think establishing, um, a, a time that you focus on your business and that you can, you can do what you need to do. So for me, you know, when I wake up at 5.30 in the morning, from 5.30 to about 6.15, I'm literally like reading my Bible or I'm thinking about where does God want me to go with this business? Mm -hmm. Like where where does he think that this thing? And so I'm, I'm studying my Bible and I'm doing praise and worship time. 
And then uh, I've established a routine from going into that to, to a working out with a group. And I've got a group of guys that come and meets at True Labs every day. Hmm. We meet there from about 6.30 to, to about 8. Right? We'll stre- stretch and talk for 30 minutes. But I've got these amazing men that are around me that uh, sharpen me, that make me better, and that also help me on those really, really hard days. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any founder is going to have really, really bad days. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, um, I've had a lot of those, but to, to, to keep going and to have grit and to have determination to say, you know what, I believe that God's best is in front of me and not behind me. Mm. And to know what to keep doing and what to change. Yeah. Like those are some of the hardest decisions. Well, and I think, you know, when, you, when it boils down to it, um, when, if, you can, if you can take that decision and put it in boiling water, it becomes really clear if that's something that you need to do or not. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the way we need to go, or this is the way we don't. Yeah. And so to get, like, those little decisions, just little course corrections, mm-hmm. and then to just have determination and to never give up. For yeah. me, it's like, you know, I tell people this all the time. Look, I'm going to stay doing True Labs until God tells me to quit. I'm going to stay on it like a junkyard dog. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm going to bite and not let go, right? And people are like, what's your strategy? What's your exit plan? Like, you know, I don't have a strategy. I don't yeah. have an exit plan. Like, I want to keep doing this because it's fun. It's exciting. Yeah. Uh, we're helping people. We're getting testimonials about our products, you know, how, how it helps people and, you know, how people can sleep better, how they can, you mm. know, be hydrated and not cramp anymore and all these amazing things. And so while it's fun and while I'm called to be here, I just want to keep doing it. So, you know, you're going to have those good days and you're going to have the bad days, but just keep going. Don't yeah. stop. Yeah. That's and then great. get the right people on the right on the team as soon as you can. Yeah. For me, that was huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. So we're about uh, we're about there on time. We got a couple of lightning round questions for you. Right got for it. That. Yeah. Let's what do are it. you reading right now, or what have you read recently that was meaningful? Um, there's a lot of books. Uh, I'm rereading uh, John Eldridge's uh, Wild at Heart right yep. now. Got a book club that Great we meet book. every every Wednesday. Uh, we meet and it's a bunch of like social media influencers, and we're going through this book. But it's the first time I read it in like 20 years. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of neat to see a book that you read 20 years ago in the different meaning. Yeah. yeah. Wild at Heart's phenomenal. Uh, Becoming a King by Mor- Morgan Snyder. Phenomenal book. We just finished that one. Um, and then there was a, a little short book called The Manliness of Christ. And it talks about how Jesus was the ultimate provider and protector. Hmm. And nobody ever talks about that. Hmm. Yeah. You know. Good reco. That Becoming a King was a good one. It's a really good I, one. Uh, I took your advice, read it, and uh, yeah, super meaningful. That was a softball. Next question. Uh, biggest failure. Uh, in retail, um, in retail only, I've had uh, so many can, failures. You can, I mean, if you'd like Whichever. to expand uh, the audience here, I'm happy to. Well, one thing that we did last year in retail that really hurt us was that we um, we were designing a signature wing, and we weren't really thinking about how it was going to sit on shelf. The signature wing was kind of like the important part, right? So we had the mm-hmm. 1700 signature wings or power wings, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, and so to put the most density on them, we we did a gusseted bag. But we did a gusseted bag that was only one inch wide at the bottom, mm. which was great if you're hanging it. But when you put it on shelf, it would just go Tough. flat. Yeah. Right. So we had, and then also the the problems that we had with this bag was that it was getting turned sideways on a lot of shelves when they didn't have room for it. The the the, the stalkers would just not mm-hmm. put it in there correctly. So we were missing a lot of opportunity facings. Right? Oh yeah. So I think that's the biggest retail mistake that we made. We, we transitioned into boxes, uh, into a box design, and that's gone over yeah. quite a bit better. That's a, that's a very common e-commerce, digitally native brand yeah. problem where you've got the, you know, you're going to ship it to a customer, you get unlimited shelf online. Packaging that's great. has such a different function when it's coming in the mail than My when it's sitting advice? on the shelf. Yeah, you got to pay attention to what would it look like in a dimly and fluorescently lit <laughs> Uh, retail environment Absolutely. surrounded so, by hundreds of other products where a customer is distracted uh, in a hurry and is going to potentially look at your product for four seconds while they're, mm-hmm. while they're Yeah, fluorescent by. lights right. completely oh, totally. affect the way that your bag looks. We've got um, another retailer that we're in up in the, in, the, in the mid-regions, and we've got a flavor that we've never launched anywhere here in the South, and it's a green lemon-lime flavor, and it just does not have enough contrast on it right now. Yeah. So it's something that we're going to have to fix. Yeah. But, you know, get that fluorescent light, man, it's such a challenge. Yeah, it's fun. What's the what's the mantra? What's the motto for 2024 for True Labs and for you? Um, I think 
I think for 2024, it's to keep expanding, right? So you have you you have years in business where you go and and if you you know I, I'm keep I'm doing a lot of biblical references today, but if you look at the Israelites in the Bible when when they go and they take over Jericho, they don't just go and immediately take over all over Israel. They just take over Jericho and they establish. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this year was a year of establishing, mm-hmm. and then next year is a year of expansion, and then the year after that will probably be an established year. So we kind of keep taking territory. Mm-hmm. And we establish. And the Bible's really cool. It talks about this. It says, um, I will give you fields to harvest where you did not plant. Mm. And you'll reap in vineyards where you did, did not, not sow. sow. Yeah. Right? And so I feel like we're having some of the advantage of our category, which is in a hyper-explosion category. And the brand that's leading us right now, which it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an okay brand. I'm not going to say anything about it. But they're, they're, they're paving the way for us to come in behind them and just be a number two or number three player in the space, which I have no problem with that because what's great is, is once people try our product and they compare it to that other product, like, Oh, this is better. We just, we'll, yeah. just, we'll just take their market share. Yeah. You know? It's exciting. That's great. Brandon, thank you so much yeah. for so sharing. Much. Been really good. You bet. All yeah. right. Appreciate you joining us. Well, thanks for being part of our team. I know, um, and I'm not trying to bug you guys and this We're is thrilled not paid. About it. This is not paid. It's not sponsored. <laughs> right. But you guys, um, uh, there's a really bright future with us. So thanks for being on our team. Yeah, appreciate it. It's our pleasure. And thank you for joining us. As always, you can listen to all of our podcasts at highimpactanalytics.com or on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you very much.